Howdy folks, I'm Hank Sheffer, and welcome to another True Life Story, right here with Jack San Felice on Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Today I'm gonna to talk about a character from the superstitions. His name was Chuck Crawford, but he went by the alias in the 1970s of Black Bart. Chuck claimed that he was a gunfighter out at Apache land although there are those that dispute that tale. But he dressed all in black, and he claimed to be the fastest gun in the West, that he could draw a gun faster than anybody else. He also claimed that he was related to Broderick Crawford, the actor. And Broderick Crawford was a guy that played in Westerns and played in a uh, police show in the 1950s. Chuck was this larger than life. He was about 5'4", but when he talked to you, he made himself as big as John Wayne, and everything was large, and he thought large and talked large and had tall tales to tell. He came to Arizona about 1970, and he went into the Superstition Mountains with a friend of his, and they're both drunk, and they were going to just search the, this mysterious place. Well, they wound up spending the night and then they got out safely the next day. Chuck had made up his mind, if he could go in drunk and come out, he could go find the lost Dutchman mine or any other treasures that were out there. So he started reading up on things and he started reading about the Peralta stone maps, which was a story that ran around the uh, area in about that 70s. It was an important story of treasure and of a group, uh, it was associated with the Peralta miners. They came up to the superstitions, mined gold, and were massacred uh, on the north end of the Superstition Mountains. So Chuck became enamored with the stone maps, and he believed that he could find the treasure by following those stone maps. Well, he did follow the stone maps, into um, the mountains, what he thought where he had found certain things. Chuck uh, would come in and out of um, uh, Apache Junction from time to time. And it just so happened about that time I was writing stories about people who were killed in the Superstition Mountains. And I wrote a story about uh, some of the people who are, got killed in the mountains and in and around the mountains and or had disappeared. And it had on there that Chuck Crawford was involved in the murder of Dennis Brown out on Peralta Road. I didn't write that Chuck had killed Dennis Brown, but Chuck had been a person of interest in it. Fact is, the story that I got was from a Pinell County Sheriff's uh, man that I knew, and uh, so I put this in this handout that I was given to my classes. Somehow Chuck got a copy of it. This is my meeting with Chuck. This is an incident at Promac. Anyhow, I happen to be in there, and I'm looking for a hammer, or actually working with some fellows up at the Silver King Mine. They're trying to reopen the mine, and I like breaking rock because some of the rocks had gold gold, copper, silver, you don't know what you're gonna find, or a mixture thereof, or they just look really neat. So I'm looking for the not too big a hammer, not too small, and I'm holding this hammer in my hand at the time. This short guy come walking in, and he started talking to the guy behind the counter, the guy's name was Jerry. Jerry says, hey, hey Chuck, that guy over there is Jack San Felice. And Chuck come, uh, walking over to me, you know, and he hollers at me, he said, I ought to kick your ass. I said, I don't even know this guy. I said, for what reason? And uh, I'm still holding the hammer, by the way. And I said, I'm just as calm as you can be. <laughs> In old days, I'd have smacked him with the hammer, but uh, I'm just calm. And I said, for what reason? He said, you wrote that I murdered Dennis Brown. I said, well, who are you? And I didn't know who he was. And uh, he said, I'm Chuck Crawford. You ought to know me. <laughs> I said, why? Why would I know him? And Chuck said, well, I'm, 
he starts stammering and everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this and do that. I said, time out, partner. I never said you killed Dennis, Br Dennis Brown. You got any word that says that? You show me the paper and I'll make a correction. Matter of fact, I'll bring that document to you you sh and you tell me what you want me to do it, to write it up, write up about that story, and I'll change it for you. How's that sound? And we're, he's still kind of hopping and puffing, and Jerry behind the, the counter could see that this was escalating a little bit, and perhaps there might be something he didn't want to take place in that store. He said, hey, Chuck, did you notice Jack's holding a hammer in his hand this whole time? And Chuck looks over at me and said, oh. He looks, he goes, oh. He said, well, tell you what. He said, you call me and come out and see me, and I'll tell you a story about searching for the Dutchman's mine. That's how I met Chuck Crawford. Well, and so I started to do a little research on Chuck. I didn't have the foggiest idea who he was. I started doing some research on him, and I started finding some information about him and said he always carried a gun and he liked to shoot guns. So I said, well, I'll go out and see him what his story is because I interviewed all those old timers. I wanted to get their stories because you never know when it's going to be a great story. So he, he called me. I didn't call him. He got, he, I guess he called Jerry, got my phone number and he called me, he said, come on out to my house in uh, Queen Valley. And he gave me directions and and so I said, well, I'll go out there and see what, and I brought somebody with me, I brought somebody else with me, but I'm going armed. And so I, my trusty little 38 here in the stainless steel manner, I carried this for many years in the police department. I wore, I put that on and I wore it out there. Chuck wasn't wearing a gun. Matter of fact, all the times I ever saw Chuck, he never had a gun on. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure he did in the early days, maybe he mellowed a little bit. So I'm going out there and Chuck's going to tell me about a story. He's going to tell me a story about two of his minds and how to get there. I said, well, now I've got the beginning of a story here. Chuck told me about two of his stories or two of his minds up on, uh, on the trail to Miner's Needle. And it, you take a dog leg to the left when you get in the flat. And so, Next week, I get my friend, whose name's also Jack, and we hike up there, and uh, we start, we had, he didn't give us very good directions, but uh, he, I guess he figured we knew where, wh wh we could find it. So we go up there, and we take a dog leg, and we started looking to see some prospect holes, and I see some green stain, which green stain, like Chris Cola means that's copper stain, and maybe there's something to it. So we climb up on this plateau, and sure enough, I see a, a dump, a mine dump, where a lot of rocks are tossed over, and I see a hole. So we get up on top, and, and my friend Jack and said, let's go check out this mine. One of the holes was partially covered up. It was a tunnel, and it was the left tunnel we were gonna go in. Well, we, we have little pin light Pen light flashlights, we weren't very much in those days. And in the daylight, we always carried something. So we started walking in there and the tunnel looked like it was getting longer and longer. And uh, all of a sudden, my friend Jack heard the sound of a rattlesnake. And he got so excited, bam! He knocked me up against the wall, my head hit the wall the, the, ah, of the mine, the mine tunnel, which was all stone and he ran out of that place. Well, I got back out and said, Jack, what in the world scared you so bad? He said, there was a rattlesnake in there. Well, let's go find out. And so I got my hiking stick and we walked in and shined on it. Sure, he was curled up in the ball and right next to the wall. I said, Jack, we'll just get him out of here. And we'll, uh, he said, well, you get him out. So I took my stick and I got him on the stick and I just, threw him outside in the brush, and we walked on back into the this mine tunnel. We went back about 90 some feet, and it's cone-shaped, like a lot of the, uh, the early mine tunnels were by the old Mexicans and even the Americans. 
cone-shaped and solid rock. It didn't require any timbering or anything. So we walked out, walked on back about 100 feet, and you could see where there were tools there, was picks, shovels, buckets. So someone had been working there, bringing out what they thought was ore. Now there was still, there was some green stain in there. So that, that must have meant maybe there was some copper stain in there at that time. The rock was mostly reddish. Well, I brought a couple of samples out and I said, well, I'm gonna take these back to Chuck to see if, if this is his or this is the place. So the next time we came to Queen Valley, which was about next week, I went back to Chuck's and uh, he uh, said, yeah, that's my ore, that's got gold in it. <laughs> I said, okay. And Chuck started explaining to me, yeah, that's from Cassie number one. He knew where it was from. And yeah, we were at the right place. Those were his two mining claims. He proceeded to tell me his stories about the Peraltas and how he believed in the Peralta stone maps. He was a real, what, uh, what you would call a aficionado of the myth of the Peralta stone maps. Because later, uh, later in later years, I've, about everybody found that there were, there were some questionable uh, validity on those stone maps. When how, uh, he really believed them and he believed he was going to find the lost Dutchman mine. And uh, he, in fact, when I went out there, he drug out some newspaper articles and it said, this man found more gold than the lost Dutchman. And another one said, he found the mine. And so I read those articles. I said, I got back. I got to go back and talk to Chuck Crawford about these things and see where, um, where he thinks he found the mine at. And uh, well, I go back, we start talking to Chuck and he starts explaining things to me, this, that, and other. This was in La Barge, towards Upper La Barge box. Well, I had already been there. I had gotten the story from Salvatore, um, and my friend, and he had explained who was up there. In fact, is I attended a lecture by a man named Chuck Kenworthy said up in the same area, he had, he had searched for the Lost Dutchman mine. Well, when I had been up there, there was nothing but red dirt up there. I, and you could see where people were digging and you could see where there was a cave up in, up off the top of La, La Barge Canyon. And uh, you could see an outline where people were digging, had been digging for some time, apparently. But I saw nothing would lead me to believe that there was any uh, precious metals there. So I discounted it. So I went back to Chuck and I started talking about it. He started, and then Chuck says, yeah, there was gold up there. I found it, I was digging it. He said, I'm gonna show you some photos of when Channel 12, I took Channel 12 up there and that must have been a long, hard hike for them with the cameraman carrying their cameras up there because he showed me the photos of the cameraman on <laughs> big camera. And in those days, I guess in the seventies were pretty good sized cameras and how they lugged that stuff up that hill and got in and out of that place was, had to be a story in itself. Said he look, and he showed me the, the photographs and, and he said, this, this is where the Dutchman's mine is. And he believed this where he said, I followed the Peralta stone map and that's where they led me to. And that's why I believe that that's the, um, the Dutchman mine. And we just got to dig a little more and then we'll find, start bringing the gold out. He said, I've got found gold from up there. And he showed me some red dirt and some containers. And I said, well, I got to follow this story a little bit more to see where old, old Chuck takes me next. So we started, you know, exploring where Chuck had been and the places he took me to in and around um, Bob Ward's cabin and not too far from Bob Ward's cabin. Well, the next time I meet Chuck, I'm going out there, he said, meet me out by so-and-so by Bob Ward's cabin, You'll, and I'm gonna show you where it is. Well, I go out there by uh, Ward's cabin and I don't see Chuck. Well, I heard, a, I heard a machinery 
some machinery working. So we drive around this road and the road leads you down to an area where the old Burns Ranch house used to be by Peralta Wash. And sure enough, I see the yellow monster there. It was a big old uh, front end loader. And there's Chuck sitting on it. And he just digging away here and that and here, that and the other. He said, yeah. He said, I got to provide these guys with 20 ton of this ore that contains platinum. Okay. Here comes another guy down. And this other guy is he got a gun on him. And big old six gun, he's hauling it, Chuck. He said, get off that front end loader. That belongs to my friend. And I, 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 don't know, I didn't know this guy at the time. And, it, and he said, uh, uh, you borrowed that and you ain't never giving it back. <laughs> I said, well, it sounds like one of the old prospectors. And, and this front end loader was a pretty good shape. And when I asked Chuck where it got from, he said, oh, it's mine. I, I bought it. Well, this guy come up and uh, I thought he was going to draw iron on old, old Chuck. And at that time, Chuck says, I, I borrowed it from this guy. He couldn't ride it anymore. He was a one-armed man. He, he'd, won, he'd lost part of his arm, the use of one arm, and he couldn't, he couldn't handle this thing. And, uh, and he gave it to me. I said, well, that's a good story. Uh, as it turns out, Chuck did have a confrontation with this other fella. And this other fella apparently pulled his gun on Chuck and demanded he turn over that um, front end loader. He must have, because the next time I was out there with Chuck, I never saw the front end loader. And by that time, I pretty much uh, heavily involved with the Silver King mine. I said, Chuck, why don't, why don't you give me a bucket of that ore and what you think I might have platinum, I'll take it up to the Silver King, we'll run the ore for you. But maybe I need a little more. Give me two or three five, five gallon buckets of it. So we, we did take it up there, but we did not find platinum. However, Chuck, I called Chuck, said, Chuck, we didn't find it. Well, come down and I'll show you. Come out to my place. So the next time we go there, we're out at Chuck's. They take me behind his house. Chuck has got pots and pans and vats and this on tables, different color water, uh, green water, blue water, uh, brown, orange water. And he, he had this chunk of rock material and it looked like it had some metal in it. And he said, look, I'm gonna prove it to you. And he sticks it in, he sticks his whole hand in this thing, orangey red, in this orangey red that water, it looked like water. It wasn't water, it was acid. That was aquaregia. And that's what I thought it was, but I, I wasn't sure. And he pulls his hand out and his hand is smoking. He's still holding the stuff. And his hand is all smoking, turning red. And he said, hey, Jack, grab me some water over there. It's over there. I said, where's the water? I didn't want to bring another vat of acid. And I finally got the water for him. He dunked his hand in it. He brought it out and it's still bright red. And he said, look, you can, and he said, get this scope, get my scope and look at this and you can see the gold in this thing. Well, I did see something, but I wasn't quite sure. You know, there are a lot of things that could look like gold, copper, pyrite, iron pyrite, chalcopyrite, they all look like gold. So I said, Chuck, why don't you bring some stuff up to the Silver King with me. And I took him up to the Silver King and introduced him to the, the Dean family who was working it. And they had a table. And by the way, we did take those, those um, five gallon cans up to the, the, where the ore crusher was. We crushed them up and we took them down to the table and we tabled his ore. Well, when you tabled, you would expect to see some metal if there was metal in there, we would have expected to see it come across the table and we didn't see anything. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean a lot because when it comes across the table, it was, there are two or three different colors because the rock in itself was different colors. So we were watching it and, and then uh, 
we some of it dropped into five gallon bucket and we we're examining it. And Chuck says, yeah, there's the gold, there's the gold right there. And so the deans took some samples of it and sent it to an assayer. And I still have one of the samples of the red dirt, quote, ore, which he claimed that um, came from the Dutchman mine. But I, uh, to this day, I still have it, but to this day, I, I never could see it. The platinum, now he was telling about his platinum. And he took this collector metal, and that's nickel. You, you can use nickel as a collector for platinum. He had a lot of stories about gathering platinum and metals. And old Mr. Dean had sat down with him and talked to Chuck Crawford for four hours. He, and then later, Mr. Dean said, look, Chuck really knows his chemistry, but he doesn't, he never records anything or, or writes it down. Well, he said, if he ever did one day, uh, then we might be able to find something, but he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't do anything twice the same way, and he doesn't record it. So that, that in and of itself told me that maybe Chuck does have something, but he just doesn't know. He does, he's smart, but he's not smart enough to uh, get whatever ore he has and make metal out of it without adding metal to it. Chuck in his later days, got sick. And I said, Chuck, I promise you, I am going to write a story about you. When Chuck passed away, he was only 64 years old. He looked like he was 90. And I, I did write a story about Chuck. And I put it in the next book that I did write, Lost El Dorado of Jacob Waltz. Chuck had a lot more stories to tell me about treasure and, and things like that. And that's my take on Chuck Crawford, one of the colorful characters of the Superstition Mountains. Did he really find any gold out there? That's one of the mysteries. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.